Hello and welcome back to the drawing board with me, Vicky Masoridou. Today we'll be talking about welding in aluminium and the heat affected zones. Aluminium is a really interesting material. It is low in density, therefore it's quite lightweight and its mechanical properties can be significantly increased after alloying from 90 megapascal up to 500 megapascal, reaching the properties of a really good quality steel. However, when we've got welds, all these mechanical properties are going away. Let's see what is happening. During welding, heat is being generated and this heat softens the material in the close proximity to the welds. These are the heat affected zones. Eurocode 9 suggests two ways to approach the heat affected zones and this softening of the material. One is to reduce the cross-sectional area by a factor, the value of which depends on the class in which the cross-section belongs to. The other way is to keep the cross-section of the parent material and to reduce the mechanical properties using this time the 0.2 proof strength in the heat affected zone or the ultimate tensile strength in the heat affected zone. Again, which one we're going to use depends on which class our cross-section belongs to. The weight of the heat affected zone is being affected by multiple factors. One of them is the type of welding. In the tungsten inert gas, more heat is being generated, therefore the area affected is bigger. I'll give you an example. If we had two pieces that are less than 6 mm thick, welded together with a tungsten inert gas method, the heat affected zone would be 30 mm. If we used the metal inert gas welding process, that would be limited down to 20 mm. Another factor that is affecting the width of the heat affected zone is the proximity of other welds. When we've got two welds in close, close to each other, then the width of the heat affected zone is the width of the group weld because it may overlap. Sometimes, in order to achieve the thickness of the weld we've got, we may need to lay down multi-pass welds. In this case, we expect that te the temperature will be increased. Eurocold 9 suggests that in cases we have temperatures above 60 degrees, we should increase the area that we will consider with reduced properties. Last but not least, the thickness of the two elements welded together is also affecting the width of the heat affected zone. If the thickness of the material is different, then we will account for the average thickness, provided that this average thickness is less than 1.5 times the thickness of the smaller material. However, if this is not the case, then we will have to test, to use tests to estimate the heat affected zone. Now that we have seen what the heat affected zones are and how Eurocode suggests an approach for the reduced strength properties, let's see what is happening with the resistance. I'll give you an example. Let's assume that we've got one meter long square hollow section, 50 by 50 by 4, that is in pure compression. The compression resistance of this material will be uh, determined by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the ultimate tensile strength divided by the gamma mu 2 factor. Now, if we didn't have a whole one meter piece and we had two half meters and we wanted to weld them all the way around to create the desired length, then in this case we should account for the heat affected zone created by this weld. So, as your code suggests, we will use the cross-section area in the heat affected zone. Therefore, it's been calculated to be half of the initial, therefore the resistance of the full material will be half of the parent material in the heat affected zone. This is just a simple example to show you how the resistance of the material can be affected 
uh, close in the areas close to the wells. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please subscribe. Hope to see you again back to the drawing board.